Well, good morning. Are you glad you showed up on this rainy day? I know I am. God's good. So, we're here. And I believe that God has a word for us today. Um, Just the atmosphere that we're in right now. God has a word that He wants to speak to our hearts, especially this morning. Um, God's will. Wow, what a what a question. I mean, if you've grown up in church, I mean, I, I grew up a preacher's kid, so I, I've been in church my whole entire life. I mean, I was I was drugged to church all the time. I mean, we had camp meetings, revivals, all these different things, tent meetings. I mean, I can remember the old tent meetings um, that, that we would have sometimes um, in different places. I mean, my mom and dad would spend time in people's houses and, and different preachers' houses, and we'd be there till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes, just fellowshipping together and what have you when I was a little, little, little kid. But growing up in church, I mean, even if you've never had a relationship with God, a lot of people that grew up in church have always asked that question too. I mean, I I know before I got saved, before I surrendered my life to Christ, there was always that question. I mean, I knew that I was here for a reason and a purpose. And that reason and purpose was known by God. And I wanted to do God's will. Maybe you didn't grow up in church. Maybe, you know, maybe that hasn't been your thing. Maybe that wasn't your background, but you still, you, you kind of had that, that notion in your head, that thought, like, what in the world am I here for? What in the world is going on? You know, well, that wanting to know what it is you're here on this planet to do is knowing what God's will is for your life. There is a There is a want to and a desire to understand and know what your purpose is. And so, you know, not to not to do a spoiler alert, but you know, what I shared a while ago is so true. It's not it's not, oh, I find out what God's will is for my life and then I accomplish that and I'm done. You know? It's it's constantly, you know. God, what's your direction in this area of my life? Because, I mean, look at our lives. We take so many different forks in the road and so many different journeys. And so life changes. And it's not that God's will for us changes. It's that He's constantly growing us and saying, okay, that was fine for back then, but I want you to do this. You know, because you've gotten a little bit too comfortable right here. And I want to push you outside your comfort zone. Um, I, I shared this, I think, uh, it may have been last Sunday. And, um, you know, I, I basically wrapped up the sermon series, you know, that we're going to spend four weeks in. Uh, I basically wrapped it up in, in one phrase. If you're comfortable, then you're not in God's will. If you are comfortable where you're at, if you, if you feel comfortable... And there's no nudge, and there's no push, and there's no drive to push you outside of who you are and and to accomplish things that you aren't able to accomplish by yourself, and you're okay with that, and you're comfortable with that, then you're not in God's will. Because God is constantly pushing us, saying, okay, no, 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 you don't want, we don't, we don't want to bog down right here, okay, don't, don't get comfortable, don't. You know, don't settle here. Don't pitch your tent right here and just stay a while. Let's keep pushing on. Let's keep moving forward. And um, so, you know, most people that went to church or maybe you've been in church for a while and you understand and you've had that question or there's been that notion, what am I here for? That's wanting to know and desiring to know what God's will is for your life. But one thing I want us to understand before we get any further, one thing we've got to do is lay a foundation. None of this matters. You will never accomplish God's will outside of Jesus in your heart. Okay? Period. Like you can wonder and you can ask the question all you want to. And until you've had that salvation moment, 
For me, it was 13 years old. I remember where I was. I didn't, I, you know, I was sitting in a pew at another church. I mean, way outside of anything. That's not where I had planned on getting saved. I mean, if I was to plan it out and map it out and said, this is where you would get saved, it wouldn't have been at this church. It wouldn't have been at this place. But God spoke my name at that moment, and I knew that he was calling me, and I had to surrender. And that's the thing. A lot of people get in church. It's not about... You know, what church you were baptized in. It's not about baptizing. It's not about sprinkling. It's not about all this other stuff. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship. You cannot do God's will if you are stuck in religion. Because religion is dead. Religion brings death. You can only accomplish and do God's will if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that relationship comes when Jesus convicts you of your sins, when you're in a service like this, or maybe you're at home reading your Bible, and the Word of God just pierces through to your heart, and the Spirit of God convicts you and says, You are a sinner. You will die and go to hell without Jesus Christ if you don't accept Him into your heart. If you don't ask His forgiveness and ask Him to come into your heart, then you will die and go to hell. That's just the bottom line. That's not religion. That's a relationship. Because religion is just turning over a new leaf. A religion is just, is just that. It's baptism into some denomination or some church. And it's nothing more than that. There is nothing powerful about that water. There is nothing, you know, there, there is no change or no life whatsoever in anything that religion has to offer. Jesus is the one that has everything to offer. Because He is the one who gave His life for us. He shed His blood and poured out His blood on that cross so that we might have life and salvation. And so, that's why we have to call on Him and say, Jesus, You forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And for that moment for me was at the age of 13 years old. So one thing we've got to get straight is that it's not about religion. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. The other thing that we need to understand about God's will is we need to understand the importance of time spent with God and the process that it takes in knowing the will of God. There's a process. And that's what we want to look at, is how to know God's will. What is the process? And there is a process, and there is a promise. With God's will, there's the process and the promise. Okay? And God desires us to know His will for our life. God, God's not desiring for us to just float around and, and in confusion and chaos and wondering what it is on earth that we were placed here to do. God desires and wants us to know what it is that He wills for our lives. And how we can bring honor and glory to His name. So I want us to look at a few verses this morning. First one we want to turn to is Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, the latter part of that chapter, verses 28 through 30. And I want us to take a look at this. And we're going we're gonna to be jumping around in some of the Old Testament, and then we'll eventually end up in the New Testament as well. But in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 28 through 30, it says, And there you will serve gods of wood and stone, the work of human hands that... Neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find Him if you search after Him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in tribulation and all these things come upon you in the latter days, you will return to the Lord your God and obey His voice. There's a process. See, we, a lot of times what happens is when times of tribulation come, that's when we start looking for God. I mean, let's just be honest. 
when rough times come, when difficulties happen and arise, that's the moments that we get real. That's the moments that we get serious about looking for God and searching for God is in those types of moments in our lives, in those crossroads in our lives. And the thing is, He can be found during those times, without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. Some of you have been through that area of your life, but the point of what it is that got you there is why does it have to take tribulation and turmoil to get you to the place to where you'll go through the process to find out what it is God's will is for your life? Why do you have to make it so hard and difficult on yourself and on myself when we go through tribulations and times of tragedy and circumstances that we can't bear? Why is it that we wait till we get to the end of our rope and the end of ourselves and we've been through such a difficult journey that that's when we really seek and search for God. That's the process. See, that's the process that we need to understand. These people, this was a warning. Moses was giving them a warning against idolatry in these just couple of verses that we were talking about. He said, listen, there you are going... I mean, he, it wasn't a question of if this is going to happen. He was saying, look, this is going to happen. And there you will serve gods of wood and stone, the work of human hands that neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find Him if you search after Him. Here's the process. If you search after Him with all your heart and with all your soul, when you are in tribulation and all these things come upon you in the latter days you will return to the Lord your God and obey his voice what happens with us and what is so difficult at times when we get through when we go through circumstances and tribulations and times in our life that's when we get serious that's when we get real about following God because there's no other way I mean we're at the end of our rope there's no other hope why couldn't Jesus just be the hope all the time why couldn't there just be the fact that we would get it in our minds and get it through our thick skulls? Can, and I'm, I'm pointing the fingers at me, okay? I have a thick skull sometimes. And too many times we, we, we get our mind and our eyes and our focus off of Christ and on to all of these other things, and it gets us comfortable. And like I said, if we're comfortable, then we're, we're outside of God's will. If we're comfortable where we're at, then, you know, guess what? Now, if you're in God's will, is there joy, is there peace and all these things? Is there comfort? Yes, there's, there's those things. But I'm saying if you're comfortable, the difference between comfort and uncomfortable, being comfortable and uncomfortable is this. If I'm comfortable doing what it is that I'm doing, then I can take credit for it. If I'm uncomfortable about doing what it is that I'm doing, then God's called me to do it, and it's above and beyond me, so therefore my life is bringing glory to His name, and that's how I know that I'm in God's will. Does that make sense? Because if I'm comfortable, then guess what? Look what I did. You know, me and Jesus is tracking here, you know. We're doing this, you know, we're doing this thing together, but I'm taking credit for it because I'm accomplishing this. It's not Christ at work in and through my life. I've gotten comfortable where I'm at. So Moses was giving them warnings against idolatry, and then he told them the process of what it is, how that they could find out what God's will was for their life. And if they found themselves searching for God's will, he would be found. He said, listen, you will find him if you seek for him, if you search for him with your whole heart, with all your heart and with all your soul. So let's look at another verse. Turn to Jeremiah 29, 11 and thir- uh, through 13. This is, you know, probably a lot of our like, most favorite verse ever. We love Jeremiah 29, 11. Man, there's like so much hope and so much promise right there. Uh, and, and, and we love, you know, we want to stick it right there and say, yes, that's, that's it. God's promise right there. That's, that's, that's where I want to be. Let's, let's look and consider the process. 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So does God have a plan for you? Yes. Based on this verse, He's got a future for you. He's got a hope for you. He's got a plan for you. But there's a process to get to that place. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Man, there's a common theme here going on. Somebody, you you catching that? There's something about this. You know, I mean, this is not just a, a coincidence. There's, there's a common theme going on right here, and it's seeking God with our whole heart. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not looking out there and seeking all of the stuff that I can get and I can gain. It's seeking God and allowing Him to put my focus on the things that He wants me to do. Keeping my eyes on Him and saying, God, what is it that you want me to accomplish? The process and the promise is found right here in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. He has a plan for you, but, but, are you willing to surrender to the process? That's the problem. That's, that's like that little, you know, straw that broke the camel's back. We get to that age, that's, that's like the, the scales tipping as to which direction we're going to go. We get in tune. We start looking for the Lord. And sometimes what will happen is we, we seek God with all of our heart and then He tells us what He wants us to do. And we're like, whoop. No, thank you. That's not the plan I had for my life. Or we wonder and we, we come in on Sunday mornings and we go to small groups and we, we read our Bible and, and what have you, and we, but we really don't spend a lot of time. It's kind of like a, kind of a passing thing. It's kind of like that checklist of priorities. Like, okay, I know I need to read my Bible, so you know, I'm just going to spend, you know, God, you got five minutes. I mean, tops. I, I got you know, kids to pick up. I got kids to go to school, get ready for school. I, you know, I, I got to go to bed because I got to get up the next morning, you know, even though I watch the football game till 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. You know, I, I mean, I understand all that stuff, but that was my downtime, God. You got to understand that was my downtime. You know, that was my me time. And he's saying, well, when's my me time? When's, when's our us time? And we wonder and we question and we're like, what is God's will for my life? I want to know God's will for my life. And, and that's what's... <laughs> That's what's so amazing as a pastor is, is people come up to you and they ask you, they're like, man, you know, I just I so want to know what it is God wants me to do for, you know, know in my life. I want to know God's will for my life. I just, I really want to do it. And I'm like, okay, you really want to know? Tell me how much time you're spending with Him. You really want to know? Because I can tell you if you really want to know. No, I can't tell you what God's will is for your life, but I can tell you if you really want to know what God's will is for your life. Because you show me what time you're spending on other things and not God, or how much time you're spending with God, and I'll tell you if you really, really, really want to know what God's will is for your life. That's the bottom line. If we want to receive the promise and the blessing that comes from serving God and His will then we've got to submit and surrender to the process. And the process is seek me with all your heart. Search for me with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's how we know God's will. Why is it so important that I do that? Because that's how you hear the voice of God. You won't know what it is God wants you to do if you're not willing to pause and take a break and listen for the voice of God to speak to you. Now, there's some things that we'll get into a little bit deeper, but just in passing, just to kind of clarify. Now, listen. This Bible is full of God's will and God's promises for your life, okay? God uses this book for our, 
for the will of God to be used in our life. Like there are things that if I want to know how I'm supposed to treat my wife, guess what? I can know how to be in God's will because it's laid out right here. If I want to know how I'm supposed to treat my wife or my wife wants to know how she's supposed to treat her husband, me, then it's laid out right here. If I want to know how to raise my kids according to God's plan and God's purpose, it's right here. If I want to know how God wants me to manage my money, I'm plugging for Daniel over here. If, God, if, if, if I want to know how God wants me to manage my money, guess what? It's laid out right here. But those are kind of general things, aren't they? I mean, those are not necessarily specific things. When we talk about God's will for our life, we're talking like, God, I need to know. You know, for, for some singles, he may be asking, you know, you may be asking the question. You're, you're like, okay, God, I need you to speak to me. I need to know who it is I'm supposed to marry. Well, you're not going to find, you know, thou shalt marry John Smith. And y'all shout, you know, wed on this day and all of this stuff. You're not going to find that in here, okay? And, and I'm not trying to discourage you from reading the Bible. But the thing is, when you start getting the general consensus of what God's will is for your life, then you start hearing the Spirit of God and the voice of God speaking to you so that when you ask Him questions, hey God, who is it you got for me? You can hear Him. You recognize His voice because you've spent time with Him to hear His Word and hear His voice being spoken from here. Does that make sense? Like, if I want to know, then I, I, I've got to be in tune with the voice of God. So, we must will, be willing to surrender to the, the process. Alright, so that's Old Testament stuff. Give me some New Testament stuff. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. This is going to hurt. Just pre-warning you. Do not give dogs what is holy. And do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. You might catch that. It's a lifestyle. Like, you want to know what God's will is? I say it again. Tell me how much time you're spending with the Lord. Are you casting your pearls? Are you casting what's holy before pigs? I mean, are you giving the world what's God's? Let's just tell it to me straight, Jason. Lay it out for me in layman's terms. Are you giving to the world and giving to the enemy... What's rightfully God's? My life, my money, my time, my worries, my concerns, my everything. Am I wrapped up in my career? Am I wrapped up in my job? Am I wrapped up in money? Am I wrapped up in my 401k? Am I wrapped up in all of these things? Am I too wrapped up in myself that I forget what it is that God has called me to do? Am I looking for what it is God wants me to do? Am I casting, you know, am I casting what's holy and giving it to, to the pigs? Am I, you know, giving to dogs what is holy? Am I throwing my pearls before pigs? Do I wonder why my life seems like it's trampled underfoot? Do I wonder why I'm going through these circumstances and these situations in my life? Well, Maybe you're just not surrendering to the process. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and maybe you know what it is. I, I, can, I can vouch for that, okay? God called me to preach at the age of 17 years old. For a month and a half, two months, I ran as far away from God as I possibly could. It scared the mess out of me. 
My, I grew up a preacher's kid. I knew what this entailed. I knew the job description, and it freaked me out. And I knew for a month and a half, two months, what it was that God was calling me to do. And I was like, no, Lord, I do not want to do that. I have no interest in being my dad. I have no interest. And God was you know, trying to get through to me and saying, I'm not asking you to be your dad. I'm asking you to be you, but I've called you to do this. You know, God's not calling you to be somebody you're not. We look at it, and when God calls us to do something that's way outside of our comfort zone, we start thinking of different people. I mean, don't we? Don't, when, when God tells us what it is that He wants us to do, don't, don't we kind of get in our minds some of these different people that you know we know that God's used in that category or that aspect of their lives, and we start thinking about these people, and we start comparing ourselves to them? And saying, I could never do that. I could never be that person. And God's saying the whole time, I'm not asking you to be that person. But it's so easy for us to get caught up and cast what's holy and what's rightfully God's before that which is unholy and get caught up in the things and not surrendering to the process. We get caught up in so many other things that um, take up our time and energy and wonder why we don't have strength. We wonder why we don't know the will of God. We wonder why we can't hear from God. We wonder why we're being attacked and trampled. We wonder all of these things and we question God in all of these areas of our life and we say, God, why is this happening to me? And the whole time He's saying, because you have not submitted and surrendered to the process. You want strength. You want my will. You want my plan. You want my promises then you've got to submit to the process. And the process is this. It starts here. It starts with getting serious. If there's anything that we could do, I mean, there is no coincidence that God has us going through this in January of 2015. If there is any change whatsoever that most of us can probably make, it is a better relationship and better time spent with God. I mean, let's just be honest. The time that we spend with Him, I'm speaking for myself, okay? I'm not trying to point no fingers, but we can all use to improve, and me especially. But the time that we spend with God typically is so minute compared to all the time that we waste and spend on so many other things. And this is our strength. What would it be like to walk through life and to walk through everyday moments and be like, I know I'm tracking with God. I know exactly what it is He wants me to I mean, like even going to the store, you're looking at something and, and God the Holy Spirit just speaks to your heart and says, nah, you need to just hold off on that, you know? Nah, you don't really need that. You know, if you, if you get that, it's probably going to take a little bit more of your time away from me. So let's just cut that off, okay? And you're like, okay. I got it. What would it be like, and, and, and you know, <laughs> I see some of the looks and some of the stares right now, and you're thinking, well, that's just too easy. But that is it. It's just that easy. It is truly just that easy. To be able to walk through life and to hear the voice of God speaking and directing your every step. Understanding that He wants to do that. He desires that communion with you. He desires that relationship. That's why religion will never get you there. Rock solid church will never get you there. Ever. Ever. If you join this church and sign, you know, on a piece of paper and sign the church covenant, it's not going to do diddly squat for you. If you go down the road to anywhere else and join that church, get baptized in the church, whatever it is you want to do, you know, say all the Hail Marys you want to say, do whatever you want to do, 
It does not matter because it is not about the religion that you're in. It's not about the denomination that you're in. It is simply about Jesus Christ and searching and seeking after Him and spending time with Him and submitting and surrendering to the process and saying, God, absolutely, I want to know Your will. And I, man, this is mind-boggling and this is like an aha moment in my life right now that I am realizing that God, if I really want to know Your will, then i got to be willing to spend some time with You. i got to get acquainted with Your voice. Because I've been listening to so many other voices. I've been listening to the voice of my hobbies. I've been listening to the voice of my job. I've been listening to the voice of my family, my friends, my addictions. I've been listening to all this stuff when you want me to get familiar and acquainted with your voice speaking to me. And God, I want to know it. I want to get acquainted with that. I want to remember it. I want to know when I'm walking day after day after day, I want to know when it is you're speaking. And God, I want to hear, I want my ears tuned in to your voice. I want to be so acquainted and so familiar with your voice that I know when it is you're speaking to me. And the only way we're going to get to that point is if we really make a serious decision in 2015 to spend some adequate time with Him. Go above and beyond. Now, trust me, I'm just as busy as you guys are. I assure you. Between working a 40-hour-a-week job and being gone sometimes and being out of town and make, you know, trying to make hospital visits and pastor a church and everything else, I'm busy. And on top of that, trying to raise a family and having a tween that's fixing to be a teen in March and having a son who's 8 years old, fixing to be 9 years old, and all these after-school things, I get it, okay? I understand. Trust me. But that is still no excuse. I mean, really. I'm going to get on my bandwagon, and I'm going to say, I don't have time for you, God, when you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins so I could have salvation. You desired so much to have a relationship with me that you gave your one and only son. And I got an excuse. And I say I want to know your will, God, but I'm not willing to go through the process and surrender to the process. I don't think so. Kind of goes back to the prophet. When God revealed to him, I think it was the prophet Jeremiah, when he revealed to him all that was going on in heaven, and he said, Woe to me, for I am undone. I've run out of excuses. I hope and pray that we all run out of excuses. Are you willing to go through the process? Are you willing to spend the time with Him? That's the way you know. That's the way you know God's will is getting a hold of this. And, you know, you may have your time, and I'm not, I'm not trying to knock on when you have time to spend with the Lord. But I, I will say this. There is something amazing to be said about spending time with God in the mornings. You know why? Because you got your whole day ahead of you. And He knows exactly what you're going to face that day. And he knows better than anybody what it is that you need for that day. To face that day. To face the circumstances. To face the trials. To face the temptations that you're going to face that day. And I find it so interesting that you, find, you, you look at it in Scripture. And you look at it, and it's, I think it's in the Psalms that it even says, Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. My soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land. Early will I seek you. Well, it kind of goes along with what we've just been saying. Seeking Him with everything you are, with all that's in you, and then getting up early enough. I mean, here's the thing. 
This is me talking to Jason right here, okay? This is Jason being honest. How about I go to bed when I put my kids to bed? Because that football game, I can turn on at any moment and watch Sports Center and find out who won the game, and it's not going to matter one way or another. I'll get to see all the highlights, and I don't even have to waste my time watching the whole game. I'll get every highlight. Or maybe I just need to unplug and turn off the computer and put up the smartphone and spend a little less time at night on Facebook so that I can get to bed early enough so that I can wake up early enough to get up before I got to get the kids ready to spend time with him because he knows what I'm going to face that day. That's me. That's my resolution. That's what me and my wife have talked about. It's easy for us to get just numbed by all of these different things around us. And we say, oh, I'm just, you know, this is my downtime, old man. How important is your God time? Because your downtime down is taking up your God time. And you spend way more downtime than you do God time. <laughs> And it should be the other way around. I mean, you look through some of the uh, some of the patriarchs of uh, of church and the time that they spent in some of these great revivals. I mean, these jokers they prayed and they spent time before the Lord on their faces before God for two and three hours in the morning before they ever stepped foot outside. How many of us have two to three hours worth of conversation to do with God? Because all of our stuff is usually... Here, here's the thing. We want the blessings. We want the blessings from the promise without going through the process. I want what God has for me, and I want the blessings that come from being in His will, but I'm not willing to go through the process to find out what it is. It kind of hurts. And, and I, I don't mean for it to come across as, as hurtful. But this is an encouragement to man. We need to man up. We need to you know, strap up our boots and get serious about spending time with God. That's the only way that we're going to have any opportunity whatsoever to find out what it is God's will is for our life. And we're going to dig into it a little bit deeper as we move forward in the days ahead. Um, and I, I am. I'm so excited. I, you know, you may be sitting there and thinking, well, good grief. You know, you're super excited to bring us down and tell us how, you know, terrible we are because we're not spending time with God. Well, no, I mean, that's, that's the thing. God challenges us so that we can make changes to better ourselves, right? I mean, it's not. Th this is not me trying to dog you and make you feel like a worthless infidel. This is me trying to, you know, this is God trying to get our attention and say, listen, I want to do something in your life. And this whole time you've been wanting my will and you've been wanting my blessings, but I'm trying to get you to focus on the process. And I want to spend time with you. And so that's where it's at. I pray that uh, God would work in our hearts and that this would be a different year. This would be the year of all years for this church and us as individuals. Um, and we would submit to the process. So let's bow in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what you're at work to do in our lives. And Lord, though it's difficult sometimes to hear the truth, and, and Lord, before this was ever noted or before this was ever said to this congregation of people, Lord, you have, you have worked this through and dealt with my heart. And Lord, it's about the time that I'm spending with you. It's about my personal time. And Lord, if I want to know what it is that you want to do with me, then I've got to submit to the process and seek you with all my heart. And Lord, get familiar and get acquainted with your voice and following your voice. So Lord, I pray that for each and every one of us.
pray, God, that you would encourage us through, through this series or through this time that we have with you. God, I pray that if there's somebody here that has lived their life and they've, their foundation has been on their religion or their denomination or their baptism into a specific church, Lord, that they would understand today, first and foremost, that it's about a relationship with you. It's about surrendering their life to you and asking Jesus to forgive them of their sins and come into their heart and save them. Lord, I pray that if we're here, and God, we've, we've been wondering what it is that you want us to do, Lord, that we would truly seek you and search for you. And knowing that the promise is that if we do that, you will be found. Lord, help us not to be uh, distracted by other things that would take up our time and our energy and our focus. And casting, Lord, all of our energy and time towards those things. But Lord, we would spend time with you. I thank you for each and every person here. And Lord, pray that you would continue to speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, just a moment of invitation. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we'd love to pray with you, pray for you, share with you how you can have a relationship with Him. Maybe you're here and some of what was said kind of hits you to the core. And you just want to kind of bow and come and be prayed for and say, I need strength. I need courage to do what it is God's called me to do, and I want to spend that time with Him. You be obedient to Him.